All right, we are live here for the KCM Deep Dive. It is Monday, August 30th, and I am so excited to be here with you today. My name is Kate Rezebeck, and I work with the content strategy team here at KCM, and they are a fabulous group of hardworking researchers who are vetting our content and writers and designers and everyone who works at 110% to keep you current and updated and have everything you need to know about the housing market. So I'm excited to be here today to share these insights with you on affordability. That's going to be our topic today. And as you heard last week with David, home prices are rising and there's a lot of fear and uncertainty in the market today around affordability. So we're gonna go ahead and bring some context to that discussion and make sure that you have everything you need to know to communicate effectively with the clients in your market and to really create that clear and concise message and answer their questions. So, as always, let us know where you're tuning in from today. We always have such a great crowd here on Monday mornings, and we can't wait to hear from you where you are. And, um, and welcome to those who are new to the deep dive today. If it's your first time joining us here at KCM, we're so happy to have you. If you're a member who comes back week after week, welcome back. And if you're new to KCM, be sure to head over to trykcm.com today and you can get the slides that we're sharing and you can see all the resources that we use and share these powerful visuals with those in your market. And as always, they're in the member area as well for members who would like to download the slides today. And I have another perk for you this week. Don't forget that this Friday, September 3rd, our KCM Fall 2021 Buyer and Seller Guides are going to be released in the member area. They are better than ever, fully redesigned inside and out, a great new look and feel, all kinds of insights and information to share with your clients and your market, fully customized to you. We even have your personalization on the front covers now. So really exciting time to be a KCM member or to give it a try. So we are gonna go ahead in just a moment and jump into our topic on affordability. So I wanna make sure that you have access to everything you need to know to be able to answer your clients' questions and, and talk about affordability. When, when what we're hearing right now is that people are saying homes just aren't as affordable anymore. And that's a very real fear. And it's something that's truly not up for debate today as we see home prices rising and, um, and people have this question in the market. And so what we're gonna do today is provide that context for you to answer their questions. Now, what you're looking at here is the monthly mortgage payment and how that is increasing significantly over the past few months. So March, April, May, you can see that with home prices rising, the monthly mortgage payment is rising too. This is data that's put out by NAR and it's starting to make people press pause on their home buying decisions because they're getting that fear of affordability. Now, what I also wanna share with you is this is a zoom in on our affordability index. If you're following along with KCM, you've seen this before. This is kind of a zoom in on affordability and January through June, you can see that affordability is continuing to decrease. So the higher the bar, the more affordable homes are in the market. This takes into consideration wages, prices, and current interest rates. So affordability is definitely declining right now. And if uh, homeowners are saying, or, or potential buyers are saying, hey, I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines and I'm gonna wait because homes just aren't as affordable right now. I wanna give you some context for that conversation. So you've seen this chart before. This is the housing affordability index that goes all the way back to 1990. And as we mentioned a moment ago, the higher the bar, the more affordable homes are. So when someone says homes just aren't as affordable today, what we say in response is as compared to when. Now, when you look at this graph, you can see the blue bar is where we are today. And the orange bars were the housing bubble. When the housing bubble burst, are homes as affordable as they were back then? No, no, they're not. That was when distressed properties dominated the market and homes were being sold at a massive discount. So when we give this context, homes are not as affordable as they were then. 
Now, what we also want to make sure that people understand is that homes are more affordable than any time leading up to the housing crisis. So this chart really helps paint that picture on affordability. Now, where this becomes a really interesting conversation and where it gets a little bit more challenging is when we start to consider what renters are feeling today. And I wanna share this graph with you that David presented last week. And this is the median asking rent since 1988. And we can see that rent has been increasing very consistently and then very rapidly over the past few years. So median asking rent is going up. And when, home, when people have the option to rent or buy, they may be looking at home prices and saying, I wanna press pause, I'm not ready to buy. But rent is going up too. And as rent continues to increase, what that does is it means that the renter has increasing payments every time they renew their lease. They're not locking in their payment in an affordable area. And what they're also finding is that they're not building equity. And so that's a double-edged sword. If rents are increasing and they're not building equity, it creates a really challenging financial situation for that person who continues to rent. Now we know that not everyone is ready to buy a home at the same time. And we have to take those individual situations into consideration. But what I also wanna share is this next graph that creates a little bit more concern for some renters as well. This is the percentage of income needed for a mortgage payment. And this is also continuing to increase. We can see over the past few months, that red section, the percentage of income needed for a mortgage payment is climbing as home prices are rising too. So renters are sitting here thinking, I'm not ready to buy a home if the mortgage payment is gonna keep increasing too. And that is a challenging situation. But what we also have to do, and we love to do this here at KCM, is put this into context. So what we also know is 17.1% of income going towards a mortgage payment feels like a lot, feels like it's increasing, but the historic norm is 21.2%. So we're significantly lower than that 21.2%. And I want to tip over to what the experts are saying about what these percentages mean and how this fits into a home buying budget. So it feels like this is rising. We know this is true. Mortgage payments are rising, home payments are rising, but what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? So let's start with this quote from Freddie Mac. It says, the essential guide to creating a home buying budget. This is from their essential guide to a home buying budget. It says most lenders agree that you should spend no more than 28% of your gross monthly income on a mortgage payment, including principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. So what is that saying? Freddie Mac is saying, keep your, your monthly mortgage payment at 28%, no more than that. And that includes the additional fees, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. NAR says the 25% mortgage payment to income share takes into consideration that a homeowner has other expenses such as property insurance, taxes, utilities, and maintenance. So that total housing ex expenses are no more than 30% of income. Housing costs are not burdensome if they account for no more than 30% of income. So NAR is saying, hey, let's cap it at 25% because we know that there are additional expenses. And if that in total is below 30%, then housing costs are not burdensome. So I want to take those thresholds and compare them to what we just saw as the monthly mortgage payment. So we know based on the data we've looked at so far that today's percentage of monthly income going towards a mortgage payment is 17.1%. This number is climbing and people are watching this number climb, but the context is what's important. That's lower than the historical average of 21.2%. And it's lower, significantly lower than NAR's guidance of 25%. So what does that mean? Today, with the context that we're looking at today, that means homes are less affordable, but they're not unaffordable. And that is the message that we need to share loud and clear. Yes, homes are less affordable even than they were just a few months ago when um, prices hadn't risen as much as they have today. 
but they're not unaffordable. And when we look at that contextually and we look at everything that's out there, the data, the insights, everything that we've been tracking year after year after year, we can see that homes are not unaffordable. So what's so important today is that you get this message out to your clients, you're able to ease those fear, fears, have that informed market opinion and be that trusted advisor who can simply and effectively share this message, chat with your potential buyers, help renters in particular understand that if they are ready to make that move towards home ownership, the financial benefits are huge from locking in that mortgage payment and building that equity. Those two factors can really be a long-term financial game changer for those who are renting. So again, thank you so much for being here this morning. If you'd like to have access to these slides, head over to tryskcm.com for your free 14-day trial. If you're a member, you can find them in the member area. Tag someone who you'd like to see listen to this uh, episode. And if you have any questions that you've popped into the comments, we'll go ahead and we'll go back through those today and see what we can answer and see if we can get you sources, resources, answers to anything that you are looking for. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again.